One word to describe why God opens and closes wombs. Providence. Welcome back to A Wretched, taking a look at the 16th century, the 1500s of the Tudor dynasty in Great Britain, which was a Roman Catholic nation. But God opened wombs and he closed wombs to create the Church of England. If you recall, King Henry VIII, he married his brother's widow, Catherine of Aragon, didn't give him any sons, any heirs. And at the time, you had to have a male heir, otherwise your dynasty could go kafritz, it could go off to another family, and Henry didn't want that. So what did he do? He petitioned the Pope for an annulment. The Pope said no because of political reasons, with Charles V being the nephew of Catherine of Aragon. So Henry starts up the Church of England. Parliament puts a stamp on it. He becomes the head of the Church of England. He disavows his own marriage, and he gets married to another woman named Anne Boleyn. Unfortunately, Anne Boleyn gave him a, you guessed it, daughter. So what's a fella to do? Get rid of her and marry another woman, Jane Seymour, who ultimately gave him Edward VI, who was a bit of a sickly boy. He was nine when he ascended the throne. But guess what he was? He was a Protestant. And he ushered in something called the Book of Common Prayer, which meant liturgy would be done the same way throughout the Church of England. King Henry's church moved from being Roman Catholic to being Protestant. Why? Because God gave us Edward VI after he closed the wombs of some women, opened the wombs of others. So now what do you have? You've got Edward VI in the time period now, about 1547 through 1553, He's reigning and he's moving the nation toward Protestantism. It was officially Church of England and theologically grace alone. But he was sick and he died too. Who ascended the throne? What do you know? Uh, well, first of all, there was Jane Grey. She was kind of injected in there just for a few days, but that's kind of a side point. Ultimately, it was Bloody Mary, and she reigned from 1553 to 1558, and she was Roman Catholic. And she had to make the nation Roman Catholic again. Why? Because she was the daughter of Catherine, who was the annulled wife of Henry. And if she said, yes, I'm Protestant, then she was basically saying that Catherine was an illegitimate mother and she's an illegitimate child and she would lose the throne. She had no choice. Besides, it was probably her proclivity. And so Mary went about a reign of terror killing Protestants, one of whom you may recall was Thomas Cranmer, who was leading the Church of England, reforming the Church of England. She had him killed because he wouldn't recant. Well, he did, but then he didn't, stuck his hand in the fire. That's a different story. The point is, now England gets ping-ponged back to Roman Catholicism because of the daughter of King Henry, the first, King Henry VIII's first wife, Roman Catholic. But, as is the case with all of us, she died. The statistic is 10 out of 10. Mary dies, and guess who ascends the throne? It's Elizabeth I from 1558 all the way to 1603. She reigned for 45 years, and guess what? She was the Protestant daughter of Henry's second wife, Anne Boleyn, who was Church of England. And so she <laughs> reinstated the Church of England to be the Church of England again because she had to, otherwise she... Two would be an illegitimate daughter, but it would appear that Elizabeth, she was indeed Protestant. For what can we thank her? Right here, the 39 Articles of Faith. This was the beginning of the Church of England saying, we are not Roman Catholic. Now, to be fair, the Church of England also stated in the 39 Articles of Faith, which you can Google and look up well worth your time, not exactly full pedal to the metal Protestant with things like the Lord's Supper just being a symbolic, a memorial meal, a little more meaning than that, church structure issues. So they weren't like totally Protestant Anglicanism, the Church of England, and it wasn't Roman Catholic. It's kind of this middle way, which is kind of where they are today. And the Anglican community today is a worldwide church. The Church of England, the Archbishop of Canterbury, which is what Thomas Cranmer was, he's the head bishop of the Church of England. And Justin Welby is the fellow right now he oversees all of the different, if you will, denominations inside of the Church of England. For instance, in America, it's the Episcopalian Church is actually the Church of England, radically liberal, but down in Africa, very conservative. And they 
kind of get along, sort of, underneath the Church of England umbrella, which started thanks to Henry VIII. That is the history of a century. And if you and I do nothing but watch Showtime, and if you and I do nothing but go, okay, from this date to that date, it was Henry, and how was the economy, and what was going on with the political system, we miss what God was doing. What was God doing? Well, clearly, he was getting people the Bible in their own language. He was getting them a statement of faith that was grace alone. You don't work, it is a gift of God so that nobody can boast. God was doing things theologically, writing history providentially through rulers. When you study history, make sure you do it with that priority. God's hand, theology. What was he doing for the church? What was he doing to bring glory to his son? That is the history that you and I need to be studying otherwise it's just dates and facts, and we miss what God does. And as a concluding note to all of this, perhaps, perhaps you are like Catherine of Aragon, or you are one of Henry's wives who can't deliver a child at all, and you are, you're hurting, and you are maybe frustrated and maybe a little bit angry. We see God's hand, do we not? writing the history of this island called Great Britain, impacting Western civilization now for centuries. We see his hand of providence with those wombs. Don't you think that he has his hand of providence on yours? Don't be discouraged. God hasn't abandoned you. He knows exactly what he is doing for you. And even though it might be hard right now, it is the best thing for you. We see that with Henry's wives and through women in the 16th century, and we even see it still today.